So welcome to Cheverie, Nova Scotia. We're down here seeking out the old Parsons Tunnel, which is a gypsum mine. Uh, not only just a mine here under the ground, but also part of an old gypsum quarry that was here at one time, uh, all overgrown now, of course. But uh, the, the edge of, of one side of the quarry is, of course, still a sheer face, a sheer cliff here, and quite tall and, and dangerous. It's, it is marked off by signage and so on. Uh, the old site of the mine is actually right here off the side of the road, uh, requires no hiking or anything. Uh, right off the side of the road here on Route 215 through Cheverie. Um, very easy to find. So we're stopped here to go down and, and in the old adit that's uh, almost completely covered. There is a, a small crawl space to get into it. Um, there is quite a bit of fill and uh, debris, an old waste rock in front of it, uh, down here at the bottom of the, uh, the, the nice white gypsum cliffs. The cavers in the province, those who go into caves, uh, know of this site as Chevery Cave. Um, it's not really a cave, but uh, there are some cave formations that they did break into under the ground here inside the mine that we might see when we're in there. But beyond that, uh, gypsum itself was a mineral um, used in, uh, most commonly we know it, in drywall. Uh, most uh, drywall, you know, depending on grade and quality, has uh, the, the, the mineral or the stone of gypsum in it. Um, that's what gives it its distinct uh, white color. Uh, sometimes nickname, nicknamed uh, gyp rock because of that. Um, drywall is, at least here in Nova Scotia, is often referred to as gyp rock. So yeah, we're gonna go down the, the face here and, uh, and into, the, uh, into the mouth and uh, take a look around. So let's get on with it. Okay, here we are up at the entrance, uh, right at the bottom of the, uh, the rock face here. It goes down into a crawl. You can see some of the black holes there. We'll step up here and maybe take a closer look. Here's basically what we're dealing with to get in. Uh, that goes down in there maybe, oh, I don't know, eight to 10 feet it looks like, and then it levels off. So we're just gonna have to do a little belly butt crawl down there. Here's the leftmost opening. These are right side by side. They're you know only three feet apart, but they all go down the same hole. Um, but as you can see there on the, the bottom, uh, that's where it bottoms off. Down he goes. A bunch of dog shit? Lovely. Oh, I see it now, yeah. Okay, here's at the bottom of the, uh, the crawl coming down. You can see the daylight coming down from uh, up outside. So basically it's like this. You end up starting in a very large uh, cavern where they, they took out the gypsum. Large flat mud floor. This, uh, this here at the beginning is probably 40 by 60 feet maybe. And like I said, it's, uh, we're right under the gypsum mountain we saw outside. And it does continue down there. But uh, this, this mud floor, basically uh, just mucky. It's like peaks of uh, ice, uh, top of a cake icing. Yeah, it does look like uh, chocolate icing. A lot of swirls and stuff in it. Yeah, if you look closely, it's got sort of this whipped texture. It almost looks like a bunch of birds or animals scratched around in it, and that could be true. I mean, it looks like triple claw prints, but they're everywhere. Like, the whole place has been marched by, like, pigeons or birds or something. But uh, that's, that's how it's whipped up, and the whole room is like that. So here at the, uh, at the back of the uh, big entrance cavern here behind us, there's these large chunks that have fallen from the ceiling sitting here on the floor, and they're big. This whole section here is probably, I don't know, 40 feet long of fallen chunks from the ceiling. You can see where they came out. It's like exact jigsaw puzzle pieces. So 
So it looks like a passageway over there to the right. And what's here to the left? It's huge in here, folks. Not what I expected uh, outside there looking down that crawl space, I'll tell you that. So we got maybe a right, a right hand. Okay, there's looking back to where we just came from. I'm just here standing in the corner. There's a turn here. We go uh, 90 degrees, maybe even further than that, right around. He's saying there is a tunnel there in front of him. Again, the gypsum is, uh, is everywhere and the uh, mud floor continues, although there are some uh, wood ties on the ground here that are starting to go around this turn. They're embedded in the mud. So around the corner here where he was looking, that's what's up ahead of him. Can you shine your beam down there a little bit? Yeah, it goes off into the distance. Wow. We continue. He sees a stope around a 90 degree turn up ahead. Let's have a look here around on the, uh, the ground again. Falls of gypsum to the floor. They're everywhere. Some mud covered, some not. Amazing though. Huge in here. Okay, we've caught up to him, and uh, this is what's around the corner. The, uh, the tunneling does continue down there in the distance, but uh, what's really cool, and this is where I wish I had a much wider angle lens, up into the ceiling there is uh, some stoping and tunneling that goes on up there. He's going up to take a closer look. We don't know if that goes off into the distance, but it's, it's way up there and it's big. Okay, here's uh, looking up into that uh, tunnel we see up off the ground. Yeah, it's just a stope up into there. It ends right there and there. Goes. Okay, he uh, says it keeps going. So down from the, uh, the stope, he says it keeps going right there. Okay, this is what we see up ahead. Amazing. I am uh, extremely surprised that uh, this is in here. All of this is, by the way, under the main road up top where we, uh, where we showed you before, where we came down. So this is incredible. Uh, we're well beyond the road now. We're over on the other side of the road for sure by now. Okay, now we've come into a, another kind of stoped room and it looks like with no visible, at least immediate visible directions here, he's going to go up there and check. I think we may have reached an end. It may be an end. He's going to go up there and check it out. I would say end, yep. You say an end? End. Okay. So it appears we've reached an end down this direction. There's looking back where we came from. We always try to show if there's uh, some kind of nature down inside the mines growing in the pitch darkness out of all the weather and rain and sun and things do live down here. And this is kind of like a mossy fungus of some kind. Uh, just micro fine little hairs, just as soft as anything. 
like a Muppet, like a Muppet's uh, haircut. <laughs> There's some up here on the rock as well. There's one there. There's another one up there on top. They seem to grow out of like a little white puff. I don't know if it's like a piece of feces from an animal. Something must be giving them nutrients. Here's that offshoot at the beginning, uh, just at the main cavern when we first came down from the outdoors, off to the right. And it looks to be a little belly crawl, but uh, see anything? More of your fungus. More of that fungus. Uh, no, there's a little uh, cave, but it's not worth crawling. Little cave, but not worth crawling. All right. Five feet. Yeah. Okay, I just want to show the. Uh, we're back at the uh, the main cavern when we first came in. There's the uh, the daylight coming from the uh, the slip from the outside. Let's put out the light here just so you can have a look at uh, what it would look like without it. Go towards the light. Okay, we're done Parsons Tunnel. Let's head back outdoors. Okay, we're up and out now, heading home. Got to climb back up to the road level. So that's it from the gypsum cliffs of Cheverry and uh, Parsons Tunnel, Cheverry Cave. We bid you farewell. See you next time. Bye bye.